Hey, good morning, church. Hope you guys are having a great morning so far. So we are starting through the book of Amos. We are um, going through the minor prophets of the Old Testament, and we are just now, we are now into uh, the book of Amos. So we are in Amos chapter three today, and right now, so Amos is a minor prophet, obviously, and um, right now in the land of Israel and Judah, there is great prosperity everywhere. A lot of people are um, very wealthy, and a lot of Israel or all of Israel and Judah's um, rivals, all of their enemies, are not doing too well. So right now, Israel and Judah are feeling pretty good about themselves, right? And so what do, you, what do you think they do? What they always do, and they turn away from God. They start being happy that they're rich and doing all these things. So obviously, as we go through this, you've read a little bit of the judgment. Um, God is going to punch them. So when we get into chapter 3, it's really split into two sections. The first half is talking about um, the why. And the second half is talking about um, the what. So if we jump right in to verse 1, it says, Listen to this message that the Lord has spoken against you. So first of all, let's stop right there. That's terrifying. Listen to this message that the Lord has spoken against you, Israelites. The God, the God who's created everything, has spoken this against you. That's just terrifying. Like, I can't imagine being in a situation where God speaks against you against the entire clans that are brought from the land of Egypt. So every single person, no exceptions, no exemptions, every single person that came from Egypt, every single Israelite that came from Egypt, God has spoken this against them. And that is just terrifying to me. So if we jump right in, you see the first few verses about um, giving examples. So verse 2 says, I have known only you out of all the clans of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So starting in verse 3, you start to see the examples. Can, you, can two walk together without agreeing to meet? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion growl from its lair unless it has captured something? Does a bird land in a trap on the ground if there is no bait for it? Does a trap spring from the ground when it has caught nothing? Is, if a ram's horn is blown in a city, aren't people afraid? If a disaster occurs in a city, hasn't the Lord done it? Indeed, the Lord God has, does nothing without revealing his counsel to his servants, the prophets. A lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who will not proph- prophesy? So that first bit is talking just a bunch of examples and a bunch of um, um, different uh, illustrations about it. So then you get into verse 9. It says, Proclaim on the citadels in Ashdod and on the citadels in the land of Egypt. Assemble the mountains of Samaria and see the great turmoil in the city and the acts of oppression within it. The people are incapable of doing right. This is the Lord's declaration. So first of all, at the very beginning, you see that the Lord has spoken this against you. And then you see the Lord saying, people are incapable of doing right. There is, in this little bit, there is, it just feels like there's no hope and that this is just going super, like super bad, right? So then if you keep reading, verse 11 says, Therefore the Lord God says, An enemy will surround the land, he will destroy your strongholds and plunder your citadels. The Lord says, as the shepherd snatches two legs or a piece of an ear from the lion's mouth, so the Israelites who live in Samaria will be rescued with only the corner of a bed or the cushion of a couch. So right now we're seeing why, what's going on. You see all those illustrations and why, what's going on, or why God is punishing. And then you see how it's going to happen, what's going to happen. And so the people are incapable, and then they, they, God is telling them that they're just barely going to get through this. Now, when God does this, he does this for a reason. He's not just throwing the, all these trials, throwing these, this stuff at the Israelites for no reason, just to, for the fun of it. He's doing this because, as you see back here in uh, verse 10, it says the people are incapable of doing right. They have turned away from God. They, have, they, just, they don't even try anymore. They don't even want God. So um, th- he, just, uh, he doesn't just do this. He does it for a reason. And I just, I, just, I just pray that, and I hope that we aren't like this, that we don't, we... When we're down in the in the blues, you know, we're we're thanking God and we're asking Him to bring us out of it. But then when He blesses us and gets us to be prosperous like this, that we I hope I just pray that we don't turn away. And I I just want you guys to think about it this way and to look at your life and no matter where you're at in life, you should be able to praise God and turn it all back to Him. If you're in the bad or if you're in the good, really prosperous. So hope you guys have a great rest of your day. God bless.